I'm Darren Barker. And I'm Spencer Oliver. I'm Sylvester Stallone. I'm David Hay. I'm Clarice. I'm James DeGaulle. I'm Angel Townsend. I'm Carl Frost. And this is this is the live show. This is the live show. This is the live show. Hello and welcome to the live shows. Last week we was talking about the dangers of boxing. We had Nick Blackwell put into an induced coma. Well, guess what? Thankfully, he's been brought out of that coma. Yes, he's he doing has. really well. And <clears throat> I've got to do this week's shows. This clown and this clown. Mr. Johnny <laughs> Nelson, former cruiserweight champion. Johnny, how are you doing, mate? I'm good. I'm good. You've just three in the bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Johnny Nelson's <laughs> room, by the way. As We're well. in a lovely his, room. His yeah. wife is over here, so <laughs> don't, don't panic. Don't panic. Well, listen, four in the bed. We're here talking about this big fight. We're here for the big fight. Anthony Joshua versus Charles Martin. First thing people want to know is, is it too soon? You know what? Uh, I actually, before the announced, I was at a dinner in uh, Manchester where Anthony Joshua was a guest of honour. I was hosting the dinner and before it all got going, we sat down talking. He said, what do you think? And I said, personally, I think it's too early. He'd already, he already, he already knew what he was going to say to me. Mm. He said, personally, I said, personally, I think it's too early because you beat Charles Martin, you're in a, a pool of, of big hitters and experienced fighters and he said well i think you're wrong he said uh i think uh the, the chances that he called me out uh i think we could beat him and uh gives me a year to to get a couple of volunteers in and by that time if i can't, if i'm ever going to do it yeah. i'm going to do it i thought about it and i thought you know what he's right any fighter in his position would do it i did it i had my, my first world title yeah. fight i did it actually it was too early I spoke to naji ben naji ben said only the other day, he said, listen, the guy's been knocking everybody out. He's now been given an opportunity to box a world title. If he's, if he's, if he's going to be the real deal, if he's ready, he'll do it. If he's not ready, the hardest thing is to come back. Uh, and that's his show how strong he is. He said, I did it against Michael Watson, Chris Shubank, look at what, what I'm with me. So he said, he has to show how strong he is. He said, I believe he can do it. And you know what? I believe he can do it as well. Because this kid, all week, it's been wicked. And these guys... Fancy it. There's no chinks in anybody's armor. You've got two two guys that really fancy it. I think it's a good fight. But you know what? I was <clears throat> I, I looked at about six of his fights. We looked at his fights didn't yeah. we, this week because I just I had heard good good stuff about him. I heard that he's really good technically. He's a southpaw. Yeah. Joshua not box many southpaws. Yeah. Only fox one as an amateur. I think that beat him. So you know that he was beat him, he boxed him a couple of times. Yeah. Beat him once. Beat him once. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know it, I thought this might be a difficult contest. Mm. I looked at Charles Martin online and i wasn't that impressed i've got to be honest mate i know he's got an <coughs> unbelievable record but there's a lot of chinks in his arm he carries his yeah, hands quite low and it stands chins in up goes, well it chins up chin, goes yeah. in well, yeah, i hear what you're saying but the thing is that's what 24 points have said mm. he's been 23 of, of them he's not mm. 20, yeah, 22 sure, of them are. you know and he doesn't look that impressive because he stands up straight he's a south player looks a little bit lazy mm. and i'll admit when I when he talks i think oh my god I, i'm falling for this guy yeah when i've seen him train i've seen him train up in big bear he looked on it. He's got this American football training to do his strength and conditioning. The one thing that let him down is when I saw him on the pads, he mm. didn't impress me on the pads. Yeah. He's got James Tillis and, and, and Hollifield and people like that behind him, backing him there, saying this mm. boy, the word on the on the street in America is this boy doesn't lose a round this far. That's what I heard that, yeah. yeah. So, and because he's slick, and, 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 and Anthony isn't slick. Mm. Anthony's, Anthony, Anthony's a banger, whereas Martin's a push, push hitter. So if you see when Martin puts him down, his opponent's down, they're down the floor as if they damn what are doing down here. Yeah, yeah, out yeah. of frustration, out of off balance. When 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 Joshua puts him down, these guys are like holding their right. thinking. <laughs> 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 That's it, the whole head thinking all like the boss in the ring. So it's a case of Martin can't afford to give Joshua any chance at all because once he gets hit, he stays it. I think if if Martin hits Joshua, Joshua might be hurt, might be mm. stuck. I think both guys touch a canvas. Yeah, um, you, going back to uh, you were saying about he's in that pool now, fighters. I remember Eddie saying, um, when I spoke to him, that the names that were getting flown around yeah. for, for Joshua to fight were as good mm. as Josh, uh, as Martin, but the difference being yeah. is there's a world title. So I think that was the decision why they went down well, that route. And, and also, I think that, you know, Martin, with Joshua in his last fight, we saw a lot of chinks in Joshua's armour that yeah. we hadn't seen before because 
before that, I've got to be honest, mate, I just thought he was invincible. I thought whatever he yeah, would hit yeah. would go over. And then he boxed Dillian White. He got rocked badly in the yeah. second round. You thought, hold on a minute. Perhaps he's not quite the finished article. Now, I actually no, like what happened to him. Yeah. I actually like what happened to him. Yeah. And Dillian. it's going to do him a yeah. favour for this yeah. fight. And, 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 and look, we, one thing we know that when he gets hit, it's have a fight or flight. Mm. You know, fighters, when he gets hit, they have a like, what don't yeah. want to know. We saw it when Klitschko got hit against Fury. His shoulders went up. I was just mm. saying, damn, where's that come from? You saw when, when Joshua got hit, instinctively his hands were up there. You know, he wasn't, oh God, what's that? Yeah, yeah, his yeah, hands yeah. were up there and he's rolling, he's rolling. Mm. He came out of it, came out and finished the way he did. And, and some people are saying Dylan Martin is just a domestic fight. He is not a domestic fight. Trust me, that boy's going to come back. Yeah. I, I can see him both doing it again. Yeah, uh, but for, for a title yeah, and a life, for a title, I can see him both doing it again if, if, he's, if the loss mm. hasn't crushed him mentally too much. Cool. I'm just going to jump in here. We've got a signed glove. Well, we're going to have a signed glove from Johnny and uh, a few other big names on there. But we've got a question. Uh, to be able to win the glove, in what year? <laughs> All right. You ask the guy. I thought you were going to do the other one. <laughs> yeah. Go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and you ask the question. <laughs> You've got a choice. You can have a. Not the, uh, <laughs> the first one. The first one was Pony. Let's not talk about that. Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about the one in 1990. Yeah. Oh, well, in what year did I win uh, the world title? So, in what year did Johnny win the world title? And you can win the glove with his signature. And that's and not the first time he boxed with the world title. I didn't really box though, did I? Run, <laughs> run, whatever you want, yeah. Well, also, if any of you like Johnny, I can see there's loads of names there. If you fancy coming on, request a chat, you can come on, you can ask uh, Johnny or myself or Spencer uh, a question on your life. But I'll read some of these here because you've got uh, hey, uh, I hire the great Johnny Nelson. Oh, you've got Johnny, oh, yeah. Nelson, Johnny Nelson, legend. Oh, his head's gonna grow so much. Uh, Ryan McAvoy, first time watching live. Um, Click to request Ryan if you want to come on yet. Uh, I have to say that AJ looks so confident, not a, not in a cocky way. He just seemed calm. Yeah, I was doing a, a show tonight, and Glenn said, Glenn McCrory said, uh, AJ doesn't want to be too cocky. And he's not being cocky. No, he just, no. and people mistake confidence, confidence for cockiness, for cockiness yeah. and arrogance. You know, and that's where you, you get it. He, he, is, he is, because if he was cocky, He'd be all braggadocious to be mouthing off saying, I'm going to do this, that, and the He wasn't. He was only together. I thought, excuse my French, uh, uh, Charles Mark was trying to pee on his tree. He's trying to mark his territory like a dog does. Basically, by. You're, you're not on Sky now, mate. All right. He's trying, to piss, <laughs> he's trying to piss on his tree. <laughs> Woo! He's trying to yeah. piss on his tree, right? And, and we're basically trying to put it on him. You know, and so and when he was doing that, you know, he's trying to. Even when we did the gloves and all, even when, when, uh, when, they, when they've been head to head. Martin's trying to put it on him. He's talking to him, looking at the down like as his woman would say, and that's what Tyson <laughs> used to do. You know, looking at the down and say, you know what? Yeah, yeah, when the yeah. lights are out, and so, and I thought he's putting it on me, on me. And now the general public can't see what's happening there, but you've got two guys that play the same game. Sure. But they just tidied themselves up and become professional fighters, mm. famous professional fighters. So when he tried to do that on Joshua, Joshua stepped up and gave it back, and I just chuckled to myself and thought, oh my God, this is a pissing contest. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and these boys, they they both fancy it. They're both on the same level. I think take the title out of the picture. I think they're both on the same level. I think this is the spot on fire without is. the title. Who do you fancy? <clears throat> I, I worried at first uh, because I thought it's too early for Joshua. Um, and I think Martin has the slickness around him, but Joshua. Uh, uh, Martin and Joshua are nowhere near the finished article. I fancy uh, Joshua. I think Joshua, as he, if he hits if, him, he's staying Do you, do you feel it's a bit of a 50-50 fight, though? Or do yeah, you, it is. Do you fancy Joshua? No, it's it? a 50-50 fight. 50-50 oh, fight. 50-50 fight, 50 /50 fight because, because for, for Martin, he has a skill, he has a movement. I've seen him. He has that southpaw style that makes things open. So when he gets hit, mm. if he survives that hit, he thinks, right, I'm going to box more into this because he can box the distance, thinking I'll take... I'll take Joshua into deep waters if he survives the power of that shot. Because when he gets hit and hurt, it's either he's gonna his horns are gonna say, no, nah, we ain't having any of that, and he's sure. gonna jump on him, or he's gonna box because he knows he, he, he technically he's smoother, he's slicker. Uh, mm. or uh, uh, where, 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 where Joshua, Joshua's gonna think, when I hit this guy, I know I'm taking him out, taking him out, and Joshua wants him to have a tail. Mm. Because Joshua's that Do you think kind that's of gonna be Joshua's game plan. I I personally think, I believe that Joshua's gonna go out there. Try and take the fight straight to it. No, that's the way I think. So Ben Bishop is saying, so Martin's Martin's going to uh, dance around him. I, I, I'll dance if around him. I, don't, I, don't, hold on, sorry. Uh, so Martin is going to uh, dance around him. Well, think I, so? I, th I think Martin will. Uh, because if you look at his fights, the first two or three rounds, most of his opponents touch the canvas and get back up again. Yeah. So Martin's going to dance around, see his way, try a few shots, I'll see what he can get away with. 
and then if he feels confident and brave, he's going to try and put it on. Yeah. He's trying to step around. So he, but he knows Joshua can bang. Just quickly, um, there's a lot of you on tonight. A lot of you are asking questions, asking Johnny questions about how the fight's going to go and whatnot. If you go to the top right hand um, side of your screen, you can press request the chat. You will come up red on the bottom of our screen. We can pull you up and you can have a chat live with the man here and this man here and more. Yeah, <laughs> right. So we've got um, right. So we've got a few on here. Uh, loads of people got 1999, right? There's a few of them here. So we'll pick one at random. Uh, Ali Spratt obviously got it again. He's a right on. on it. All right, I'll just does it. does Martin being a southpaw cause AJ problems? Yes, I know we touched on it a bit. Yes, it does. Yeah. I, I think he, I think uh, from a, uh, he struggled with southpaws in an amateur. He's not boxed a southpaw as a professional. Yeah. yeah. He's had to get sparring, and and you won't listen to when he's spoken. He's always spoke about he's a t- big tall southpaw, uh, and so I know it's going to be an issue. Got the shot is, though, isn't he? Yeah, right down no, the middle. This is an interesting thing that he hasn't only brought in Southpaw sparring for this fight, he's been sparring orthodox as well, yeah. which I found quite unusual. Yeah, but if for the race, same for race. But listen, this is what I heard this week. So this week, I'm hearing he's still driving up to Sheffield mm. to train, to spar. Oh, yeah, he's done it twice this yeah. week. Yeah. What? The fight week? Come on, man. Yeah, so the drive alone. I, when I box, there's no way. I usually stop sparring. Yeah, it's seven uh, to ten uh, days before. Yeah, the, uh, the week before. Yeah. But to drive to Sheffield and drive back down again, he might like the drive. He might like. It might be in a big like tour bus and a big yeah, double. Yeah, well, that might double be. Double bed in the back <laughs> of a big truck. All right, all barriers, helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the point. That's but the do you point. know what he's though? He's like he's he takes training to another level, Joshua. He's just he's one of those guys. That, he's a beast. He just like he trains so much. If anything. He will overtrain him. He does so much training, and probably because of fight of this magnitude, that's why he thinks by going up it's going to be more beneficial. That I, shows yeah, maybe I, I a think, little inexperience. Yeah, but, the, but the thing is, it's his lifestyle. Training is mm. my lifestyle, and if yeah. you make it part of your lifestyle, it's addictable. You can't sure. help it, no matter what. You'll have you you'll, you'll think you know what, I need to use up here. You can't help it. You've got to do it. Mm. Uh, right. And I think it, it's his lifestyle. He did it before he boxed. Yeah, you know, he used to do the weights before he boxed, and now he's yeah. thought I'll have a go at fire. You've got to relatively young. Uh, as in ring wise, you've got two relatively young heavyweights mm. 26, 29. I know you're thinking, well, that's not too bad for heavyweights. That's young. Do you know what? We've got one here. Sorry, we've got Ryan uh, is going to come on. Ryan McAvoy, yes. if you want to come on, we can bring Ryan on. Come on, Ryan, bring it up. Pull Ryan up. We might have <coughs> we've got a quick one here for you. What round do you think he will win in, Spencer? I think that the fight will be over inside six rounds. Ryan. 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 Hey, Ryan. Ryan. Can we swear on him? Good. Yeah, you can hear me. Yeah, yeah I can hear you, mate. Hey. How you doing? Yeah, good views. Yeah, right, right, right. Did you get a question right, by the way? 1999. Right, yeah. you've got the gloves yours, mate. Sign Johnny Nelson <laughs> glove. You can put it in your wardrobe, put it in your cupboard, under your stairs. <laughs> <laughs> we've, got, we've got a few more signatures Anyway, there. go on, Ryan. What's your question, mate? I had a few questions, but I didn't want to come on too strong. So I thought, do you think Eddie Hearn can uh, hold off Al Heyman if he comes into the British market? Damn. Good question. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a case of what he brings to fight because the, the market's about the fans. Mm. So if the fan, if, if Al Heyman puts fights on that the fans want, then job's done. Mm. And so uh, uh, Eddie is doing a great... If, for other professional fighters around the world, they love British box at the moment because we're putting fights on that the public want. And that other fighters are saying that. I was out in uh, in Austria at uh, Klitschko's training camp. The, the heavyweight was saying British box is flying at the moment. So if you put the fights on, that the public want George Groves, uh, Frotch, uh, Quig, Frampton, Pity Khan, uh, 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 Brooke hasn't happened, but they're putting the fights on what the public want, mm. then it's not an issue. So Al Hamer's got to come in and bring fights. There's no point in putting the big fights on that the general public just don't get. You can put two big names on within the boxing world, but you need fights that have that crossover appeal. And you look at Wembley, it's a great example when you had Carl Frotch and George Groves, 80,000 people. Do you think all those people were boxing fans? Yeah. No. You, no. You're talking grannies, you're talking kids that know yeah. Jack Diddley about you boxing. Probably got a thousand, and he fell 2, in to the story. And that's what Anthony Joshua has now got about him. You go to a post office, you go to a pub, you've got a granny falling in love with this kid. You've got a little, <laughs> yeah, it's what you've got. He's got that crossover appeal. And they might not know, they might know Jack shit about boxing. What they love, what they see, they're thinking nice. this is a great story. Now you're slipping into the live oh, show. Got right? <laughs> anything else you want to ask, mate? Um, no, I think I think where Box Nation and Channel Channel Five are don't get as big a promotion is because uh, Sky Sports News I think gets to the the general public more so than Channel Five. You only go on Channel Five, mm. well, myself personally, if there's a fight on there that I've heard about through Twitter or 
things well, like that's that. What I'm saying. And that's what so I'm saying. How else? The advantage there. That, that is, it's not. It's common sense. Now, Channel Five could do it. Fox Nation could do it. So if they yeah. don't, if they don't, if they're not busy spending as much time on promotion, like like a news feed or an advertisement or whatever, they can't just expect. Well, we've got a part of this night. Come and watch it. They've got to spend time building it up, like we're yeah. doing this week, like we've done the last few weeks, building a part to get everybody to hear and know and want to know about the fight. And then you do it that way. That's when you get the crowds. In. It's it's common sense. It's media sense. But these guys are thinking, well. It might not be how they work, but if they want the big numbers, it's common sense because Sky has been in boxing 25 years. We've kept Sky has kept boxing up in the forefront for 25 years when ITV, Satanta, Channel 5, BBC, Box Nation have dipped the toe in the boxing pool, but they've all fell by the wayside. Why is that? Because yeah. they're not the format to do this. If you stick to the format, there's longevity, but they won't stick to that format. Yeah, I think I think Eddie Hearn is a, a great promoter. I like what he's done with Darren's career and Carl Froch, and he's really great at building the profile. I think that's yeah, he's, he's brought a new, new era, a new era into boxing. Isn't he? He's changed it from the small shows to the Wembley stadiums to the O2 arenas. I mean, years ago you'd have never got that. You know, people struggled to feel um, like Bethnal Green. Yeah, or cool. I just think but from the fighter point as well, as well, as as a fighter, he looks after you. Not only does he get you the big fights and you're on the big shows and you're on Sky TV, I know as a fighter, working yeah. with him, you know, you find a Saturday, you're paid yeah, almost and, instantly. And I mean, could, and that's a big thing as a fighter. Yeah, and you could be sat there ringside. I've seen these guys sat ringside, come out of a fight, you do an interview and they're just saying, yeah, it'll be on in six yeah. weeks' time. You're thinking, what? Yeah. Usually you're, you're on the phone when I've got a fight, when I've got a yeah, fight, when yeah. I've got a fight. And the other thing about Eddie is this. He is a grafter. He'll yeah. be in London today. He'll be in Scotland tomorrow. He'll be in Sheffield the day after, then I'm back in London. I said, Eddie, are you ever at home, man? Now, this guy is a grafter. No matter what you say about him, he's a grafter. Now, all, not one other promoter in the UK do I see doing that. That's just my personal opinion. I yeah. don't see him doing that. I don't see him left, right, center. They might send a representative. They might do it by phone, whatever. Eddie is on the road. I was driving in Sheffield. This frigging Continental drives past me. It's Eddie in the car. <laughs> I'm thinking, what are you doing here? He's a grafter, and yeah. that he's putting the work in, so he's getting the results. I do, I do have one criticism. Usually, I can get tickets, but on this occasion, I wasn't able to get tickets, and I thought it's a bit of a, a little bit of a kick in the teeth the way it's sponsored by StubHub. Is it yeah. a bit immoral yeah. to use StubHub as a sponsor? I know they do have the face, they do the face value tickets, but given that they're, it's in their business interest to sell them secondhand, can they be trusted with their first hand tickets? All of them are going to go onto their website. Uh, well, that's my only criticism it, of it, one, I think. I, I don't think, know why uh, they wouldn't. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, it's, just, it's a tough one. Well, this is, this is business. If, so so, yeah. so if you're going to, if there's a fight on and, and someone wants to buy all your tickets, sell the tickets. It's mm. up to them to get rid of them. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and, and so stop and think, oh, we can sell these tickets at three times the face value. Shame on them. It's up to them how they want to play it because they've got to find someone to buy it. You know, it's a gamble they're taking. Then it's a big fight. But yeah. uh, Matt Trump's yeah. job is to get rid of the tickets, and that's what they're doing. You know, yeah. and it, it's very, it's, it's just, just how is it? To, it's to be fair, most of the time I do get the tickets I want. It was just this one occasion, so most of the time I think if you're I mean, there on the, you're dot, not doing bad, then mate. You're not doing yeah. bad if you get <laughs> every other time. I mean, there's a lot of people trying to get tickets, but they could have sold Wembley Stadium with this with this show. If I'm honest, there was a lot of people. Everyone you speak to couldn't get tickets, so. Uh, um, you're not on your own. Did you come to Atlantic City when I won the world title? No, no, I didn't. Um, I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was a college student. Don't worry, mate. I never went either. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> right, Brian, you've been a star favourite. Did you do at the live show? Uh, no, sorry, live shows at yahoo.com. Yeah, we'll get we'll you to And Ali Brown, I know you've got yours sent out soon. Yeah, brilliant. All right, Brian. Thanks. Bye. Right, listen, mate, we're going to be running out of time. If we stay on this, we could be talking about this all night, but we've got to talk about the it's underground. Not, oh, no, well. sorry, Johnny. Sorry, this mate. Like great guest, mate. Great guest you guys have on the show. Better than Sky. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no. uh, we've got uh, Cyclone Promotions got a deal with Channel 5, now, question mark. That's right, they have, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, they have got a deal. But the thing is, again, it's about... Uh, it's, it's no point in having the, the, the deal if you, you can't provide uh, the product. So, so if Cyclone have obviously got the product to provide, that's why they got the deal. And it's a case of, listen, you remember when Santanta came on the scene, ITV, BBC put the, put the water, initially everybody's got these great ideas, let's do this, this, this and this. Yeah. How long did they last? 
So let's hope Cyclone Promotions have got the fighters mm -hmm. to fulfill the. That's the, it, the, the fighters, dates. isn't it? Yeah, they need Not just having one. That's yeah. right. There's no point. I can't in see. Oh, if I'm honest, I can't see you being too many days. It's just he has a whole Frampton. Yeah, it's Frampton. But but, but, yeah, but yeah, he's can't fight. Yeah, and you've got to have a bit of an undercard if you if it gets to the point of the pay per views and stuff like that. So, but you know, if Channel Five has been good on them, at least. You know, he's spreading the love for yeah. boxing out there. Cool, right. Well, listen, let's talk about the undercard Saturday night because it's not just Joshua Martin. We've got some great fights in the undercard as well. We've got Lee Selby versus Eric Hunter. Now, whatever happened to Eric Hunter, he's his first time boxing for a world title after 11 years. Yeah. I mean, this kid can fight as well. The kid can fight. He came on with a bit of an attitude as well uh, at the press conference. Eddie, was, Eddie Hearn was asking him questions. He said, yeah. Just come to fight. One word answers. He was it. He was off. Really? He's a bit of a prima donna. So yeah. basically he's saying... Why wasn't I invited to the public workout? Why was is my room like this? I don't like the gym. I don't like the hotel. And he's not working. I thought, all right, he's a bit peeved. The guy yeah. can fight. Yeah. Uh, and Lee Selby does not look effective until they get in the ring with him. And he's mm. like, he's like trying yeah. to catch slime. Yeah. Now I know Lee Selby's been up in Sheffield. I saw him up in Sheffield sparring with Kid Gallagher. Mm. I'd have paid for that. Really? Two days, and it was a, it was wicked. Mm. And I, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing because Kid Gallagher's horrible to spar with. He's like. It's like it's like rice guys hitting fight, you. Oh, and Selby can fire, but they were at it. Mm. You ask Selby himself; he will tell you it was they were on it. It wasn't like mm. a beat up job. Selby's a good fighter, yeah. and that's why uh, Hunter is silly if you underestimate Selby to think you know what it's going to be a pushover. It ain't no pushover because you mm. get mad trying to hit him, and then you walk in the shots and the pop pop pop. He hates the tag he's been given the Welsh Mayweather. Yeah. You know, so that's rather not. Yeah. I'd rather you look like it. The the workout, you're cool. Yeah, 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 work. yeah, yeah you look sharp. You got that, the crowd going, right. didn't you? So when you start thinking with anger, like like Hunter seems to be doing, half your tactics are down the drain already. Mm. You need to be calm, be smart, be cool, sit back, and say, right, this is what I'm going to do. I think Selby doesn't. He, he's yeah. reach. He, he'll, he'll go through a rough patch because Hunter will try and put him on, or put it on him early. Mm. I think Selby will be slick and move around and make him fall through the ropes and do the job. So I'll see. Um, it was Chris Sanagar. I was down at the Repton, the famous Repton, mm -hmm. the other day. And uh, Chris was down there because he knows my dad and a couple of the others. We went for a walk and we said, what do you know about Eric Hunter? And he said pretty much the same. You know, he's, mm -hmm. he's arrogant. He believes in himself, but Selby will get to him. Yeah. He might go through some dodgy patches, but Selby he, knows he, he, he's confident. Patches, Sanagar, there, though, not because he's man. You could see in his eyes he was confident. Yeah. He fancied his man to do the job. So. Well, let's moving on. Moving down the card. This could be fight of the night. Matthew back with the one Yeah, uh, mate. It's, and it's two, two guys fighting for their career. You know, yeah. The loser's got nowhere to go. He's, no, got, no. he's got to hang the gloves up. Matthew Macklin is about pride uh, for for Brian Rose. He's thinking, you know what? It's a big deal for him. So we look train really hard for him. I think the, the one that will be most least prepared for this will be Matthew Macklin. Mm -hmm. Because in his head, he's head and shoulders above, above uh, 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 Brian. Yeah. So he'll be thinking, you know what? Uh, this is all I've got to do. Unfortunately, age is a bitch. Yeah. Aging a bitch <laughs> and it pulls you back. Don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm the young puppy, right? <laughs> right. And, and what, that's going to be the issue. And I don't be surprised if Brian Rose beats Matthew mm -hmm. Macklin and Matthew Macklin a lot of people him, thinking that. announces his retirement that night. And not because Brian Rose is a better fighter. It's like seeing a it's like seeing a, a footballer that played for a Premier League club and next minute is no disrespect to, uh, to Brian, the next minute is playing in Sunday League because that's mm. the only league yeah, yeah, that'll take yeah, him on. Course. And he's bitter and he's pissed off about the game because people are thinking, don't remember me for this. Matthew Macklin is going to be that fight because he's thinking, he's going to think afterwards, I'm better than this. Mm. This guy shouldn't be beating me. Do you think, do do you think <clears throat> Macklin should have hung his gloves up by yes. now anyway? Yes, I, yes, do well. I don't, and I, I I don't know why he's hanging about. I, I don't um, get it. Well, I, I said some, well, Shed some light. I'll be, I'll message him. He's a lovely bloke, Matthew. And he was saying he still believes, now he's dropped down that weight, he still wants to give it another yeah, crack at yeah. like midway. He still believes he's got the talent, and which he has. But, but it's that age against now. Who, against who, though? That's what I'm saying. But he said this is a good cage. Yeah, this is, this is a good fight it. for him. This is a good fight yeah. for him to, to see where he's at. He goes, Look, if I put a couple of points and I win, yeah. I'm not far off. You know, a couple more, and I'm, and I'm back up there. If I have a close fight with him, then you know, do I do I don't I? If he loses, God the he loses. He, he said himself, it's, it's, the, it's the, it's problem, it. the problem is, if he has a tear up and it's an exciting fight, he's gonna think I still got it. And so if he's having a tear up at this stage, mm. where is he gonna go? Yeah. When wins, where's he gonna? So mm. he's better off getting knocked out, mm. or or just just out and out out box, and then it, it writes it. It's such thing. a shame, isn't it? Because I know it's timings and and where you started your career, but for me. 
is leagues above. When, yeah, they, when they're right. both in their prime, yeah, exactly. Matthew Mack is leagues yeah, above yeah. Brian Rose. You know, that's, that's the game. That's the boxing game. And you see it so much well you know, when when great fighters lose to substandard yeah, fighters. And not saying Brian Rose is. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but he just said it. Well, I'm just saying, but you, you, you've seen it before. <laughs> you just you've seen it, it before. I was just thinking, at, at, the the level, at the level <laughs> Matthew's fought at, he's, he's, he's going to be all over trip tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Darren Barker. <laughs> he's only got ten followers right. left. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's, let's look at the rest of the card anyway. Jules Groves versus Brophy Groves. You missed out McDonald. We've got McDonald. We've done McDonald. No, 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 I'm doing Jules Groves. Are you going now? Right? You've been missing oh, out. See how he's playing out again. Well, I think Jules Groves versus Brophy. Right, this is what the problem is here. Uh, it's a good. It's a domestic fight. This now, now Brophy has always because he's got the hunter's mentality mm. because you know, George Groves might have been in his sight for months, for years, for two or three years since, for, 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 for however long. He wouldn't have been in George Groves' sight. George Groves wouldn't have thought twice about it. Mm. So the problem is he had, he's had years to prepare and dream about this big fight for himself. So when he comes in, this is going to be the best he's ever been. That means George Groves cannot afford a below standard performance against this guy. He's got to lift himself, which is very hard when you're thinking mm. of boxing somebody that's not really. Yeah. I don't want to be chasing this. And and, and I can see this when kid he's trying to. Like yeah, that's what, I can see this kid just pickpocketing mm. where, where it shouldn't really happen. Now, and people think I've got a problem with George Gold. I haven't. I just say hey, George should beat him. But if he takes his after ball and he gets a substandard performance, this kid could pickpocket him, which shouldn't be the case because this kid has prepared for him for years. And years yeah. and George prepared for him more. Well, fight though. That's what I'm saying, yeah. and that's why George needs to yeah. make sure he's on it. He has to be thinking, right? Forget about Callum Smith. Forget about James McGill. Mm. You're my focus and get rid of him. Do you think Groves will ever be the same? No, I, 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 no, I think Groves. The best Groves we saw was the first Dutch fight. Hundred percent. And since then, it came to, and, and and people give me a hard time about. I'm saying, come on, you tell me before that. You tell me. You tell me what happened after that. And he came up with a second fight. Brendan Ingle calls it free smart. So he's thinking, I'm going to try some new tactics here. Mm -hmm. And what he's thinking, I'll box him and I'll, I'll keep him on. It was the unpredictability that the pace, had he jumped on him, jumped off him, that got him to success in the first part. Mm -hmm. And from then, you know, what he got knocked out. And then what's happened is, I don't think his, think his performances have been near the first fight he had yeah. with George yeah. Grove. Yeah. Another fighter that's in that, that same ilk is Deontay Wilder. Coming up to winning the world title, this white man was a beast. Yeah, he's gets good, the good world title, and all yeah. of a sudden That's his terrible. performances have dropped terrible. because yeah. he's trying to. It's like I put your hand in the cookie jar, mm. cookie jar, getting all the sweets. You can't get your hand there. It's just plain safe, and that's mm. where the problem's been. Interesting. Well, let's go on Darren's one. Jay McDonald versus Fernando Vargas. Uh, now, he's a late sub, isn't he? Yeah, he's a late sub, and, it, and he, he doesn't look like he's bringing much to the table. If I'm honest. I like Jay McDonald because yeah. he's funny. This kid, <laughs> he's fat. No jack. Shit about boxing. <laughs> you think I'm bad? He knows nothing about boxing. So yesterday we're at the tube station. He's going back to Doncaster. He's, a, he's just a Doncaster lad through to. Yeah. When we do an interview, he said, "Johnny, don't ask me any boxing questions." Said, You're a boxing show, man. He went, "Don't ask me about any other fights. Just ask me about me cool pool or what, no problem." So, so we're on the tube. So he's trying to figure out how to get to King's Cross. So, so what he <laughs> said, oh, the signs. Yeah. So he said, <laughs> "He's world champion now." So he's with Dave Cordwell. And he said, "If we get there now, our ticket doesn't get us on this." We don't know you should do and hide in the toilets when the inspector comes. I'm like, yo, no, no. Really? <laughs> and I thought this is a conversation you shouldn't be having right now, but he's such a lad. Yeah. Wow. So too. That's how he is. Gavin loves boxing more mm. than James. Yeah. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And Gavin, Gavin's a, he's a boxing. He's dude. getting there though, Gavin, isn't he? I mean, yeah, do, yeah. You think, do you think he could go on the world honors? Uh yeah, I think Dave Cornell's doing a brilliant job. Yeah. A brilliant job of them both. Mm. And uh, you've got to give it to Dave Cornell for turning around. And now he's collecting himself a bit of stable that. Uh, have belief in him, uh, Tony Bellew, David Price, uh, the, the McDonald brothers. And I think this fight for Jamie, he'll get the job done. He's fit, he's long, he's awkward. If my man thinks he's going to walk through on me, he, he's, he's silly. You look at the size then, difference, there's going to be a huge difference. Then wins over there, uh, Kamida as well. Yeah. That was big wins. Go to America. The way he was built. That, the, yeah. the, the Japanese club yeah, out yeah. Mexico. Yeah. Um, he was like 22 and 0 or something stupid. Decent really win though, really. Yeah, that's right. He'll so, take some beating. He'll take some beating. And I think, you know, now he starts to believe himself because now he's talking about unifications. Mm. Yeah, Jay McDonald's talking about unifications. A kid yeah. that don't give a two dinners about boxing. <laughs> talking about yeah. unifications. You ask him what belts from the or whatever's out there. And yeah. he's also talking about, he's a huge bantamweight. And what about the move, the, the step up he's talking about, moving up to super bantamweight. Now, 
that would be interesting. Now yeah, you've got your Cole Franktons, yeah, and your Quigs. That's right. Mean, and that's the thing is, he's one of those fighters that doesn't look pretty. And mm. because he doesn't look pretty, the problem is fighters will underestimate and think I can deal with him. Mm. And if, if that's the he'll case, he'll get the shots. He'll get the shots. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll get the fights, he'll get the money. Mm. And that's when they need to worry about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm just going to go back to the last, just because I'll forget to go back. Would the uh, would that crush George if he lost George Groves? Would that would you say that's the end for George? Hundred yeah. percent. I think that. Yeah. yeah. I think that he's still got the dream. He's still got the belief that he's going to be a, become a world champion. If he loses to someone like Brofusion, you you a got kid it. coming up who really is leagues below him in in, in their platform and where yeah. they're at. I think if he loses, it's the end of the yeah, road. I would say so. I think he'll carry on fighting, by the way. Yeah. But I just think it will be the end. I don't think that he'll just become you know, a media. Right, George Groves, he's great in getting himself into the positions of those rivals. Yes. Because there's something about him where you think he rubs fighters mm. up the wrong. He, he does it with De Gale. He yeah. does it with uh, 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 Froch. He, he, he's, he's, he's probably he's short, he's more short, than he? he, he yeah, that you know final what? hurdle. Yeah, he is. He's, he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's fighting that bank account up, but the final hurdle is just not working. Well, he's a small one. On this, uh, sorry, uh, Spent, yeah, Ryan McAvoy just asked another one. Looking forward to seeing Ahara Davis on the card. Yeah. yeah. Who would win between Ahara Davis and Luke Campbell? Also, Cardo there. That's an interesting That's a really well, good I'll fight. tell you now, because I've seen, I've seen Ahara close up. Mm. Well, we've all seen him live and that, but I've seen you him. You know him personally, yeah. yeah. He will take some beating, I'm yeah, telling yeah, you. Yeah. He's, when Tony went away and he was, uh, when Ricky Burns was, Fighting in Texas, I mean, Chinese went to me. Look, do me a favour. Can you look after Ahara Davis and Ted Cheever? I went, ah. Anyway, got roped into it. Not long after, I would say hours into it, having Ahara Davis on the pads, I, I could not believe the power. He's a lightweight. Yeah. The way he hits, yeah. it's it's unbelievable. It doesn't even look like it though. He's so rangy, but when he hits them pads, it's a joke. And I'm telling <laughs> you now, after what I see with. Luke Campbell. He's got there as well. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't put him in. Was it Mendy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got Mendy. I That's wouldn't. Put, I wouldn't put Luke Campbell in with him now because yeah. the answer to the question is, oh, I would beat him now. Yeah. I would wait a year. Campbell's Luke, not mentally Luke, strong enough yeah, after yeah, the defeat. Uh, maybe. But Campbell, I still think Campbell potentially is going to be a world champion. Yeah. But it's mm. about Angelo Dundee said it once. He said it's about the matchmaking. You match him right. Where each fight they're learning something, they're stepping up and close to that. That I think at this moment in time, I wouldn't do the fight now. But if you're talking a year's time, then mm. do the fight because O'Hara, what he's a ten fight, not yeah. take them out. You know, and he's like he punches like a mule, kicks and he looks weird when he's throwing the shots. He's <laughs> he does, he's destroying so on all of those. Yeah, yeah. And that's how you prepare for someone like that. Well, much further down the bill, making his professional debut, Conor Ben. Nigel Ben's son. I mean, there's a lot of interest around him. We've seen him in the gym, Dale. We've yeah. been over to see him trade. This kid can fight you. Guys. He you know, can fight. Same other pads. He reminds me of Nigel. Yeah. Through and through. Yeah, the thing yeah, yeah. is, and, and the thing that, that he's had 22 amateur fights. So this this fight will be his 23rd fight in his life. Mm. So therefore, it's his first professional fight. Mm. Uh, uh, the the pressure he's on on a big bill, having his own press conference. He's 19 crazy. years old. Crazy. He's on. So in his whole life, he's only four. 23. This will be 23rd mm. time he's boxed. So so he's having his own press conference and how he handled it. I was so impressed with him, uh, and, and his dad has come and said, "Look, I'm here for this first one. Then I'm getting out of the way. It's none of my business." When his dad's telling us about how they they spar with each other, I'm thinking, "You get done for child abuse, man. You know, 15 years old, it's fine." He said, "Yeah, and I smashed him in. I, 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 I checked his tooth, and all the clarets coming out of his mouth. I've got a video with a right tail." I've seen thinking. the YouTube clips. So you can get them on YouTube. You've seen them. He's put a couple on on Twitter, and, and he does his livery. Yeah, and that's why they don't play around. That's what they don't ramp. And so it's you think, bad, isn't it? that's what I'm saying. So you think. Jesus, so, so Connor, uh, the, 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 the problem is this, Nigel, because he was raw, because he was street smart, not, not, and this, no disrespect to Nigel, because I love this man to that. Nigel, when he saw a shot, he'd like, fuck this, you're getting that, you're getting the back, you're getting the whole body, and if you're missing me that, he came back with the other shot, the whole lot came through, yeah. whereas Connor, he, he seems a bit more educated, yeah. a bit more refined, yeah, yeah. so the arm shot, so if he miss, he's got a cover, yeah, and so yeah. I'm thinking, that rawness, that, Nigel had was 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 I think a, a big part of his success. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. so because Connor hasn't got that rawness, will he be as successful as his dad? Mm. And so that's what I'm thinking because he seems to me. But more, will he be technically more better than his dad? That, that, I that, that would be the plus for him. As I well. think he may be already technically better than Nigel. Yeah. Where yeah. you know he's got it yeah. in his blood, and mm. I, I just think Nigel was very raw. Mm. But um, it will take Connor a lot of time. I think. He's got a lot to learn. He's still very young. Mm -hmm. He's inexperienced. And, and the so. other thing is this. Nigel, 
I, the same, the way he seems to be, I don't think he'd put his name and push his son on such a pedestal if he didn't. Nah, you're right. And he, he wouldn't. wouldn't. And he wouldn't. And, and the way Nigel was talking about Connor at the press conference, he started filling up. Yeah. Mm. Before, and then he's like, "What are you crying for, man?" And Nigel said, "I don't want my, I didn't want my kid to box if indeed. I just didn't want it." Uh, and he said, "Now I'm here beating that sporting because I know he can fight. Mm. Trust me, he can fight." Nigel ain't no liar. He'll tell it's you right. exactly how it is. He ain't a liar. I actually said to Nigel, because he's in brilliant condition, are you fighting again? What is it for real? He said, Johnny, I'm knocking him out. He's trying to get the he said, fight, I will knock him out. Yeah. He said, I'm, I'm fitter now. I, listen to this right, one. Johnny, I didn't even know. Yeah, I was there. I was stood next to him. I couldn't believe it. it. He's just like 20 a day. Nigel, yeah. you went out. What? Not when you was boxing. What? You 20 a day is that. Like, boom, banging him out. I'm wow. thinking, you weird on my How'd you manage that? Really? But it's for real. Yeah, for real. I mean, I mean, and, and, and people I think I remember you telling me the story there about it. It was, a, it, was, it was a party animal, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? He was in the rave scene. And people are saying, the people saying, why is he doing it? And last year, I was talking about fighting Mark Oak. Is it financial? It's not financial. Nah, it's not money. It's just that fight. Nigel's not coming out for a career as a fighter. Mm. It's just for that fight. That's what I was doing just about Marco Hawk. Just wants that victory yeah, over, yeah, yeah. over. So that's what I was doing with, with Hawk. I said, I just want that fight. I didn't want to box. These guys are too young and too fresh, too fast. For me. So it's just that fight. Mm. So Nigel knows if I just have that fight with Chris, yes, we'll get paid well for it. But you know yeah. what? I'll smash him. So you've got two old geezers that are in there. <laughs> one of a tear up. Yeah. And that, it's just that fight. And so you've got to understand where he's coming from. I said, mm. how close is that happening? He said, very close. Debbie, what would you have done if you got back in there? Would you let him? Yeah. I, she, she would have let him. She, she can range up. They love the money, mate. Don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. We've got a set overseas, haven't we? Yeah, we've got one yeah, overseas fight. Let's talk about Manny Pacquiao now. Um, Tim Bradley. Uh, first fight. Yeah, Bradley. yeah. Um, uh, I think Bradley one piece. I've said that. I think, I think, I think so. I think the stuff I'm hearing in the gym. Yeah. Kid Galhad was out there when when uh, Pacquiao was preparing for the Mayweather fight, and he finally said, "Johnny, mate, Pacquiao's going to get done." Really? He said, so "What's the, what's the word on Pacquiao? How's he Pacquiao, looking?" The, the word on Pacquiao for this one, he's looking terrible. Really? I think he's he's smashed. I think it's stage of his career. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. been through war after war. Yeah. I mean, you can't keep going to the world like that. Yeah. I mean, the the word is he's looking terrible. I think Timothy Bradley beats him. I think it's a, a beautiful uh, uh, opponent for Kel Brook if he's looking for a big name. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Kel Brook or who's this just lost? Uh, who's just beat um, uh, the British kid? Um, uh, Broner. Broner. Another, another name right. for Kel Brook. Yeah. But I think. He, Kel Brook needs a big name. Yeah, he needs, about a, Kel Brook, he 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 needs yeah. a big name. Yeah. So I think Timothy Bradley, when he wins this against Pacquiao, yeah. is the man that Kel should be trying to chase. Even when if he's got to go in his backyard, get revenge for Junior Witter. Uh, Kel oh, yeah. can beat this boy, uh, and I think Manny Pacquiao. We've we've seen the best of him. He's saying it's his last fight. When you start talking like that, there's an issue. Uh, but the the, the 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 stuff I'm hearing in the gym is he's shot. And I know oh. it's a bit harsh. He's shot. It's interesting, you know. And, then, and I like I like Manny. I like Manny, but he's he's, he's days off. You gotta be careful. I can see the little brown book. The little brown books so, out. We know what this means. Every, every week I do it. It's just a simple thing we've done at every show, um, and it is a quick fire round. But there's two questions on here that Debbie might not like. Answer to one. Um, right, like all of them. Right, so good. It's a, it's the like quick fire them. round. Yeah. I've done with. I've done some answers last week. Oh. Right, ready? Right, quick as you can. I'm early bird or night owl? Early bird, man. Oh, I'm not. Dancing or singing? Dancing or singing? Singing. Wine or beer? What? Wine or beer? Wine. Beer's nasty. Cats or dogs? Dogs. I can see now, beard or clean shaven? Beard. Fruit or veg? Uh, I'm easy, man. Uh, <laughs> fruit. Money or fame? Money. Money. <laughs> Money over there. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, Johnny's yeah. wife sitting yeah. over there. Money. Right, okay, so, world title or five million cash? Five million. World title. Yes. Right. Cool or text? Uh, cool. I've got text this. Bullshit. White bread, brown text bread. Argument. Brown bread. Blonde or brunette? Both. Give a, give a shit. <laughs> Ferrari or Lambo? Look at your wife. Uh, she said blonde, mate. Is she blonde? No, no. Hey, who's blonde? Ferrari. Christmas or birthday? <sighs> Christmas. My birthday is just after Christmas. Everybody's scared. Beach me. or pool? Interesting. Beach. Fries or chips? Right. Fries or chips, the same Skinny thing. Skinny and yeah. fat. All right, I'm a Yorkshire boy. Chips and gravy. Hey. Chips and gravy. Right, your boobs or ass? I'm an ass man. Fruit, okay. fruit. Looks or personality? 
personality. You like to but I like to have a real personality. But the, the, my, my mate what said, you, you can't put personality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, window or, or aisle seat? Uh, the aisle seat. There you go. Well, Johnny's running. <laughs> Johnny and Debbie's good Johnny, Johnny and Nelson. And then yeah, Nelson's quick fire and done it together, wicked. Well, well listen, I think that brings us pretty much to the end of the yet. show. I want to tell you a story about my name. Because oh, all right, right. it's a brilliant yeah, story. Brilliant. Brilliant story. Oh. So, well, I didn't meet my dad until I was 30, so he starts. <laughs> so when I met him, right, I'm saying to him, because my name on my birth certificate, oh, we've got to go back now. Right. All right, His I name first, isn't Johnny. Right, my name isn't Johnny. When, now. I, when I first started <laughs> school, um, it was a little Catholic school. My teacher in the first year was Mrs. Leahy. Hi, Mrs. Leahy. So it's a Catholic school. We're in the school. So my name on my birth certificate is Johnny. Oh, no. Ivanson, Ranny, Nelson. Yeah, Ivanson, not Iverson. Iverson, <laughs> Ranny, Nelson. So there's so no I'm, Johnny in it. So I'm a bit of a team of kid. So, so, uh, so Mrs. Leahy uh, and all the kids, so she's saying it wrong. So bottom lips going, the tears are going, it's not a shit. <laughs> and all. So she went, okay, okay, okay. Just for today, we'll just pick a name for today. Now we're a Catholic school, so she's going to pick apostles' names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, hey, son is, her son is called Morris, yeah. right? So he puts his hand up and said, let's call him Morris, Mom, Miss. Right? That's how he used to do it, Mom, Miss, right, just as right. true that. So I, I looked at him, I thought, I will smash you, but shut him out. <laughs> so so she went, no, 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 we're picking up them. So all the kids saying, Lou, uh, and all this stuff, Peter, whatever. So we got to John. And uh, she said, no, no, we've got two Johns in class already. So one of the kids shouted, let's call him Johnny. So they all started laughing, <laughs> sniggering like that. So, so she's thinking, oh, do you like it? So that's where Johnny came from. But at school, they're saying, can I buy you rubber, Johnny? So, so that's what I got can all you the way just through. say your real name before you was called Johnny again? Just it was Ivanson, I-V-A-N-S-O-N, Rani, R-A-N-N-Y, <laughs> Nelson. Now, so I didn't meet my dad until I was 30. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I so when I met him, uh, came to the house, I'm sat and I said, where's the name come from? He said, well, Ivanson was a famous boxer in Dominique. I thought, liar, never heard of it. What about Ronnie? He said, what do you mean, what about Ronnie? He said, it's a nice name. I said, what about him? He said, he's after the comedian. I'm thinking, <laughs> Ronnie. I went, Ronnie, who? He said, Ronnie Carver. The man, Ronnie. <laughs> I went, it's Ronnie, Ronnie. His name's Ronnie. He went, yes, that's what, Ronnie, Ronnie. I said, Ronnie, R-O-N-N-Y. He said, he said, is it R-A? <laughs> so can you imagine him going to the registrar office saying, what's your son's name? I'm Anson. Ranny. <laughs> <laughs> so she's she's thinking she's saying Ronnie, yes, yes, Ranny. Right, so she's writing art oh, so saying it out it sounds R A N N Y yeah, yeah. Nelson. So I'm named after the God rest his soul, uh, former comedian, Ronnie Corbett. Ronnie. Wow. Right. So wow. so so from school Brilliant. because Johnny was there, it was I, was, I hated Ronnie. Uh so <laughs> so because Johnny was there, I stuck with Ronnie, I changed my name by a depot. Uh, uh, oh, you've done it. Oh, yeah, yeah man. Uh, 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 so I'm still, I'm still, still there, but that's I'm, and I've got to keep running in it. But everybody knows me as Johnny, and I can never remember my mum ever calling me anything else uh, really? from from an early age. But that's a great name so after so there you go. Ronnie Corbett. Do I know Ronnie Corbett? That is the Ronnie. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell jokes. Come on. Oh, Ranny Corbett. Wow. What's, What's the this? story? Ranny. Well, Hello, Ranny. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I think that wraps it up for this week's live shows. I mean, that has been amazing. And what an amazing story. We can get us every Thursday, 8 p.m. Johnny Nelson won't be here next week, unfortunately, but he will be coming back on again. Johnny, I've got to say, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Talking Johnny, about, pleasure, you? boys. Yeah, yeah, pleasure. Mate. So every Busy Thursday, 8 p.m., yeah. make play. sure you get there. See us. Let's um, play the minibar. From myself. Yeah. Mr. Nelson Boo! and Mr. Barker, Granny. this is the live show. show.